event at the Japan US Exchange Debate Tour 2017 at Kyushu University. The whole tour is sponsored by Grand Debate Association, the US um, NCA, CIB, the International uh, Discussion and Debate Committee, excuse me, Committee on International Discussion and Debate, uh, National Communication Association, and the financially generously supported by GDEC Corporation. And the local uh, event here is organized and sponsored by Kyushu University Faculty of Language and Cultures and JDA Japan Debate Association Kyushu Chapter. And the debates are helped by the ESS uh, debaters. And uh, this event is originally for high school teachers and students, but uh, because of some uh, scheduled conflict, uh, we have this debate uh, for the audience and also for the video so that uh, many other people can watch. The, this year's um, high school, we have a national high school tournament, and this year's uh, resolution is this, Japan should significantly relax its immigration policies. And the Kyushu University student and the visiting American debaters will make up two teams and give demonstration debate. Uh, using exactly the same resolution and exactly the same format. You can find the format uh, of the debate uh, at the back of the, one of the handouts. And we will go through this. Um, and after the debate, uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Keppert, who accompanied the American team, to give us uh, some words of feedback. And uh, after this debate, there will be another debate, which is uh, so-called uh, Asian-style parliament parliamentary debate, which is more extemporaneous debate. So uh, probably without further delay, we'd like to ask the debaters to uh, just give uh, names and which speech you are going to give and uh, go on to the debate. Okay, first uh, from the affirmative, affirmative, uh, sorry, affirmative, the minister. Oh. Hello, my name is Ayn Suzaki. I'm a sophomore in Kyushu University. Um, I have debated for four years because I was also the member of the Henda debate when I was in high school. But this, um, I haven't debated this style for a while, so I'm kind of, yeah, <laughs> intense. But yeah, I want to enjoy this one. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hung. I'm from Vietnam, and now I'm third year student in Kyushu University. So I have been debate for exactly one years, and I I rarely debate in Henta before, like just like one in in a way, professor in a way class. But like then that's why I actually don't know much about this, and I hope that this time is gonna be like, a good chance for me, like to know about this style of debate, and like, I will do the negative like the affirmative attack and the affirmative defense. So. Uh, Wish we can have a good debate with the negative team. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Elijah Smith. I'm part of the American team. Uh, I'm just stopped being a student. I just finished my master's degree in communication uh, about two months. Two months, I think now. Two months ago. Uh, thank God. Um, and um, hopefully we have a good debate. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Um, 
My name is uh, Yuki Onishi. I am a, I am a junior of the Kyushu University, but so I have some experience in the Henda's uh, debating style in uh, a little bit, a little bit. But so the, um, I made made a debate for the first time in in four or three years. So I'd like to enjoy this debate. Thank you. My name is Naoya and I am a three-year student of Kyushima, uh, Kyushu University and although I have experienced the parliamentary debate for two years and more but this is the first time for me to do a this style of debate so I don't have any confidence but I will do my best. Oh. Me too. <laughs> Hello, my name is Allison Faust. I'm also part of the US team. Um, we are really excited to get to do Henda style debate because it is not something we have in the United States um, and so it's fun to get to learn about new formats but see how they overlap with a lot of what we've done the last couple of years. Um, I guess the one thing I'd want to add is my favorite fact about Henda style debate is apparently Henda um, translates to weird in Japanese and I think that that is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> The standard format of the Henda debate use uh, four-person teams, but uh, we have three-person uh, teams, so uh, the, one of the speakers will give two speeches. But, uh, except for that, we will follow the uh, format uh, of Henda. Okay. Now, we'd like to welcome affirmative constructive speech, four minutes. Japan should significantly relax its immigration policies. We have two arguments based. Our first argument is economic development, status quo. In Japan, the population is decreasing gradually. According to the government forecast, the nation's population, which stood at 127 million in 2013, would be 52 million in 2100 if the current low birth rate continues. Actually, Japanese birth rate uh, keep decreasing. And Japan is famous as a country where aging is the most advanced in the world. So here is called the super aging society. Um, uh, what we can know from those facts is that in, in the near future, Japan lack of labor power seriously. For example, in manual labor industries, they need young labor force to do a physical job, and the lack of labor force will lead to the delay in development, the development and reducing efficiency. In fact, after taking this problem, immigrants continue, uh, contribute to mainly two aspects in Japanese economy. One, labor shortage can be solved because immigrants is a key potential source of human capital. Industries are, and other businesses' necessities for labor force to function will, uh, will we be satisfied. For example, according to Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare state that Care, uh, caregiver talents of shortage by 370,000 people in 2025. Secondly, Japanese economy will be pushed up thanks to new markets formed by immigrants' daily demands, such as food and gloss products and so on. As expected by the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, immigrants can boost up Japanese gross domestic to um, 600 trillion from the current 490 trillion thanks to immigrants, uh, it, uh, according to Japanese time, 2015. Importance. Labor shortage and aging, uh, aging in Japan are a serious problem because it weakens the whole Japanese economy in two ways. One, reduction of products, and two, as narrowing markets. Labor shortage is one of the big reasons of bankrupt, uh, bankrupt in Japan in this place, so immigration can effectively solve that weakening in birth weight. So we need this uh, motion. And uh, our second motion, uh, uh, argument is Japanese society's stabilization. Um, status quo. Shortage of working aged people puts an um, economic burden on Japan, Japan in terms of shortage of tax and support for welfare and pension systems. Now Japan is facing the burden, uh, 
budget deficit, deficit and the amount is increasing year by year. So moreover, moreover, the problem of labor shortage becomes more serious as going to the district, I mean the countryside. So those, uh, those areas cannot maintain their local administration well and, uh, living, uh, and also they cannot support living people in those kind of uh, countryside. So uh, it's kind of uh, uh, so Japanese uh, society is becoming unstable um, because of those facts. In fact, immigrants who work in Japan have to pay tax and join the pension system. Therefore, they can contribute to relieve the welfare burden in Japan. Saito um, um, uh, is uh, pointed out that in terms of cha uh, change in welfare, Japan gains by five thousand nine hundred thirty-nine million dollars thanks to immigrants. They pay consumption tax every time they buy something. They get salary already take off inco income tax. They pay national insurance every month if they live long in Japan. They also pay for a pension system. So also they can stabilize local administration because most of immigrants go to many cities where there are jobs, especially where the rural areas are now having higher demands. According to the statistics from the Ministry of Justice, place where we cannot call them big cities come to the higher land in the towns with many falling workers. Lastly, falling labor in nursing can solve the problem of the elderly. Um, importance. Um, economy burden in terms of the welfare and urbanization problem destabilize Japan and make it vulnerable. Uh, so uh, without any effective solution, it is a high possibility that Japan will bankrupt or systematically collapse in the future. Immigrants for short and long term can stabilize the situation. Thank you for listening. One minute preparation before cross-examination. Question. Uh, say that you want to relax, significantly relax Japanese immigration policy. Yes. How are you going to do that? Um, uh, we are following the definition, so uh, we, will, uh, we will welcome to the 10 million um, immigrants within 50 years, but uh, it's just their luxury. So um, if we need, um, so sometimes people say that the, um, uh, so many people will come to Japan and we don't have any space for them, but it's okay because um, uh, we have a solution like, um, we, you know, the Japanese government is also smart, so they can know that what kind of, <laughs> it's not stupid, so they can, uh, they know that what kind of job, uh, what kind of human uh, uh, labor uh, we need in some uh, specific areas, so we can gather those kind of people from other uh, old countries. Okay. So like. That. So about how many people would be let in per year in order to get to that ten million? Um, we haven't decided. Okay. That point. Okay. So would you agree then that immigrants are able to fill jobs when they get here? Yeah. Okay. So, w are you telling me then that? You're relaxing the policy in order to have the sufficient amount of people to come in, right? As the Japanese government sees fit. On the negative side, we represent the status quo, and the status quo is supporting the Japanese government in a sufficient amount of people, which is a very small number, which is what the Japanese, the smart Japanese government has decided. 
why should we change to your plan when you just told us that the Japanese government already knows what to do? Um, actually, in Japanese government, they are divided. Like, first, uh, one part of them is saying that, that we should not invite immigrants, but one part, part of them is uh, consist uh, insist okay. that, that we need immigrants. So they are battered in the in the Japanese government. So we cannot say that. that uh, okay. Yeah. One last question: Where, what type of jobs would these immigrants be taking? Oh, sorry. What type of jobs or what fields would the immigrants have? Um, a, a lot, like nothing here, and also construction and something. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I would just welcome the negative constructive speech. Four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. So we, the, uh, the negative side, strongly believe that the Japan should not significantly the, the relax its immigration the policies. Our statement is supported by two disadvantages. Disadvantage one, it would make the em employment for citizens in Japan worse. So, and it, so under the status quo, so the the number of the population in Japan would decrease, especially for the people who can some the work, who can still work in, in the society. So according to the according to the data of the Ministry of Health, and Labor and Welfare in 2000, 2013, so the rate of the people between some fifteen, aged fifteen to the uh, sixty and sixty four it the percent percentage is that as a 63.0 percent in 2010 but however the three years ago in 2013 it's the red the red it was the uh, 62.1 percent and so it decreased by some 1.1 percent in, in the three years so and also uh, so so it it means that so that it um, leads to the there are less and more less and less people and can uh, can can make an important role in the Japanese society to support their to, to support the society. So in fact, so if some Jap the Japanese governments welcome the immigrants, the so wage of some each employees would decrease. So, so according to the, the survey of the national. Bureau was the economic research in the 2011. So the, they assemble they assemble data about how percentage the wage change the wage the change if the immigrants increase by one percent in the population. So in that in the in the U.S. for example in the U.S.A. it it decreased the wage uh, maximally by the 1.6 percent, but on the other hand, in Europe cases, it in decreased the wages uh, the, in the worst by the uh, zero point two percent. So, but if so, in that in in today's cases, so if some go, the Japanese government the uh, welcomes so massively uh, massive the immigrants, so it, it means that uh, it there are some more possibility to uh, decrease the wage. The percentage of the dec decline of the wage, right? The significance. As Japanese government, it should guarantee the life of the, its own citizens in the, in order to maintain in the, its future. If, if if it cannot do that, Japanese employees would have difficulty living on a daily basis and have antipathy against the, not only nations but immigrants. The decision would be in the com confliction between employees and immigrants. The disadvantage too. Uh, okay, Immig immigration first innovation in the technology. So, present situation in Japan. So many companies try to introduce new technology in order to produce the new products and improve the efficiency in works. So according to the, some the, the Shinzo Abe, so there are some the three arrows. So there are some other forms of solving the aging the pop aging the population increasing of aging population. Like so, the automation and technological some technological automations. So effect so re 
remaining work which grows lower uh, uh, the effect it's the remaining work which grow lower so according to the survey uh, according to the, sub, uh, the research of Lewis in 2005 the, it reveals that in that area where many immigrants are introduced there are less companies which utilize the, the new techniques so it's so okay the significance the growth of economics are significant related to the growth that our nations for our futures we must try to introduce new techniques improve the uh, productivity like so the mechanic the mechanization in the factory in order to maintain our future Japanese government should prioritize the growth of economic for all of the reasons we have strongly about this solution reservation thank you preparation before questioning Affirmative summary speaker will ask questions. said Japan has a 63% unemployment rate. Is that true? Unemployment, so unemployed uh, no, Japanese. No, 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 it's, it's not the rate of unemployment, but so the, it, the rate, it, it mean, means that so the, the population rate, which the people who can still work, who can still work in the so, society. So I want to ask, are those people employed or unemployed? Because you said they were unemployed. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, it, 60, it, it, 63, so 63% of people who can it, still sorry, work are... Uh, sorry, sorry. It increases both of these. So employees and unemployment. So do they have jobs now or do they not work now? Uh, yeah, they have some... The many people are works still work okay. in, the, in, that rate, in the ratio. Great. So if many people could still work, why does Japan have a huge nursing shortage? Why do Japanese people not take those jobs? Japan needs a lot of nurses. There's a big gap of how many nurses. Just like Americans, we're not good at math. We need a lot of people who can work on computers and who can program. How come Japanese people don't take the nursing jobs now? So because um, the so we so we have to um, create uh, so we have to uh, so Japanese government um, uh, um, try to some um, try to some um, automate automate try automation. To automation and okay. so the automation and so in order to some um, uh, com complete some um, like okay. shortage of some. Um, how can a robot take care of an elderly person? Like a nurse? Yeah, so I think it is okay to know how to Now, we have two minutes preparation time before negative attack speech. Negative attack speech will that's the affirmative constructive argument. Uh, so, I'm uh, uh, to the uh, 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 u
Okay, we just welcome the negative attack speech. We have three minutes. One point clarification. What we are opposing is not immigrant itself. What we are opposing is significant relapse. But having heard the Prime Minister's speech, I cannot understand what, where is necessity significant relax on this, you know, on the immigration policy. That is what we are what we are opposing now. This is a very important clarification. So move on to my speech. One is about the rebuttal towards the economic development from the Prime Minister's speech, right? Two, three points of rebuttal. The, she firstly said population birth rate will be increase due to the immigration. But this is not true, right? Uh, Professor Yamaie, 2070, said, that, you know, the 60% of the people didn't give a bus. The a reason of the very low bus rate is the main reason of the low bus rate is they feel worried about their future. That is to say, do, they do not have enough income. That, but under their program, the more, if more immigrants will get the job, that is to say, the less Japanese will get the job. That, that is to say that more people will feel that uh, worry about their future. So the no, less people also will give a bus for their children. That is to say we think if we welcome the more the immigrants, the bus rate of the Japanese will decrease. Secondly, he said, uh, she said that immigrants can contribute and uh, immigrants can be the key labor. But again, this is a very important point of the, my introduction, right? If the immigrants can, even if the immigrants can contribute to society or immigrants can be a key labor, where is the necessity we significantly relax the policy system. We are happy to employ the very key labor from the, from the foreigners or from you know, head hunting or kind of things. But I can't believe the 10, 10, million, peop 10, million, uh, 10 million immigrants can be the key labor in Japan. That is to say there are no necessity significant relax on the immigrant policy. Nextly, they said the labor shortage is, is, is a very problem. Uh, is very problem, she said. But two, uh, two response. One is you know, in the Japan we already uh, we already have the very three million and six hundred thousand unemployment labor force in Japan, right? That is, the Japan many Japanese is do not have the job in the, in, the, in the status quo. If they have the resources to get the, to relax the policy, they should have the resources to give a job training for them, all kind of things, right? And secondly, an automation. Uh, as my partner said, the automation or machinalization that is occurring, that is to say that you know, demanding for the job workforce is decreasing. In their cases, if we hire more, more immigrants, the, very, the, the labor force is overflowed and Japan cannot hold all the labor force in the Japan. That is the reason why their motion already forced. Secondly, about, the, uh, in, about 
the social system. They said after taking this plan, the social system will be stabilized. But this is not true because uh, you know, Hayashi 2015 said they pay tax, of course, but at the same time, large percent of the immigrants will get the more more like support from the government, more social welfare over which they pay. That is to say, the governmental resource will never increase. The more rather, we have to pay out more money to give the more support for the immigrants. That's why that's, that's their benefit doesn't stand at all. Thank you. So the question uh, from the farmer side, the third affirmative speaker will ask questions. There's no preparation time, so please, uh, third affirmative speaker and the next one. Questioning for two minutes. Okay, thank you for your speech. So first of all, you talk like 3 million people now lacking a job, but we are in a short term of nursing jobs and agriculture jobs. Why these people in the first place don't take that jobs? Because government, uh, got, because the many companies refuse them. Why they refuse them? Because they are not capable. Uh, they are not capable so you mean that like if the immigrant now is capable and like they can do the job yeah. and why the company, the company refuse them because they are capable. In that case, if the more immigrants which are who are more capable than Japanese, of course Japanese employment rate will decrease, right? That is a problem what we are discussing. Okay, so the second question is about the support. You say that like you're gonna cost more support for like the immigrants. How much it's gonna cost for that kind of immigrants? Do you have any kind of data? For uh, I don't know exactly how much is, but what many professors are put many professor, many very authorized professors said that they will get more than the which they We pay. bring for you like a really huge number, it's 5,000 million. Do you have any kind of number to compare with that? Sorry, I don't have any of these. So, okay, number. so he has very interesting questions. You said that like robotics can take the job. Doesn't this mean that like robotics can take the job of the old Japanese people itself in the first place? I can but even if that is true, we, it will not justify the very getting the more immigrants because, you know, under both part time, the situation is still worse for them. So the question, my question is thus, in the case that like both robotics and immigrants can, all, can take the job from Japanese people, then why robotics can be justified but immigrant is not justified? It, you know, what we are saying is that the problem was the shortage of the shortage of the labor force does not exist, right? This is the problem provided their side of us. This is not our problem, this is your problem, right? Okay, so about the last questions, like I want to confirm again about the 63% of the number. You say like 63% of unemployment, no. it is very juice, or so less. What, what we, I said 3%, but this is very still large number of the people, I absolutely number. Okay, thank you. Okay. We will move on to affirmative attack speech. Uh, reputation against negative constructive arguments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen in this house, it is very interesting to, for me to stand in here and debate with the negative teams. So let's testify what they talk in their negative speech. Number one, they talk about the employment in Japan is going to worse in two ways. Number one, like, like the unemployment rate is going to increase. And number two, the worst, the average worst of them is going to decrease. However, there is a few questioning about here. Number one is about the data that they bring up for us. They said that like there's 63 percent of people are unemployed in Japan. That is the the questions from outside that it is really because if it's 63 percent of unemployment, it's meaning like that country is already collapsed in the first place. So we want to ask you again to confirm about that number. But number two, you talk about like the wage gonna decrease, but you say that it's the increase for one percent and zero zero point two percent. But my question here is that's like. The Japan, like the immigrants, in the, at the same time, they contribute for the cross product of Japan. They boost up other industry of Japan, and we have like, like and like we have a lot of like data to support for us. For example, as Saito said, 
If the immigrant come in, they can push up like at least three main industries, including manufacturers, food, nursing, agriculture, and so on. So in the scalp, guys, why the scalp decrease in the wealth? It should be considered by the government. When actually the benefit coming from the immigrants for Japan themselves is much more better. But more interesting, let's move on to the second questions about like they said that the innovations of Japan's gonna like of Japan's gonna be less and like Japanese people like the, the innovations and you the robotics gonna be less. Two questions here. How long does it take like to, for you to develop a robot that can actually take care of like the elderly in the first place? And like how can this kind of thing gonna be work? But let's say that I like, just give them their best and say that like, okay, now the robotic is occurring. But in the same time, if robotic take the job, it means that like, Japanese people will be unemployment. Then now compare if like, the, their job is taken by the robots and their job is taken by the immigrants, which one is better? Of course, if they are being taken by the immigrant, it's better. Why that? Because at the same time when immigrants work in those countries, they pay tax, they support for the pension system, and they also contribute for the economics. However, the robot, they don't have to pay tax, they don't have to pay money, and we have to pay money to actually maintain for them in the first place. So my question is that like, ask the Japanese government, which side is better to number one stabilize the situation that is now lacking of the like, human resources and that is the problem that is being proved by outside of the house and number two like even if like you bring out like the robotics and the innovative why does car kind of thing is beneficial for the japanese government in the first place so for all these reasons proud to stand in you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, affirmatives in this debate thank you Okay, thank you, Mr. Speakers, and ladies and gentlemen in this house. So let me ask you some questions. So, you said that so the, you mis misunderstood about so the unemployment in the first place. It is it, we didn't say talk about uh, 63 percent, but the unemployment rate is a three percent. So, right? So, so how how how, how do, okay? So, and. Uh, you say that so there, there is some possibility. So other industry in the agriculture, for example, is ag agriculture or something like that. So, so, but in your problem, so how can you so how can you some solve with some the the sh shortage so they encourage some agriculture agriculture industry even though they are oh. some this well it's easy you can take a look at the plans in like the introductions like you have to grant the visas and in order to grant the visas to come to Japan you have to at least being hired by the Japanese companies and our agriculture company nursing companies is already now hiring foreign foreign people for take that kind of job so that's why they give them enough incentive to take that job and go to Japan have higher salary than the old countries so like, that can solve the problem of the aging problem uh, of, of the like, lack of dust human resource in the first place mm -hmm. okay so yeah on, race, uh, on that point is in the nursery cases so who would some who was who at, at some higher than the core quality so who was some uh, Japanese uh, who hospitals and higher and qualified Japanese nurse or and some Indonesian nurse who will uh, work at half pay? Uh, actually, in the fact that a lot of Vietnamese, Indonesians, Peru, Peruvians and Brazilians are already taking the nursing jobs and they are actually doing that well in the current situations. So I don't think that is any kind of question for the scout team. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Now we will move on to defense speeches, uh, but before that we have two minute preparation.
next speaker is Affirmative Defense. Now we welcome the affirmative defense speech responding to the negative attack speech. Three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to answer, I want to like conclude this debate in two main thrust points to answer two questions. Number one, it is necessity to relax the immigrant policies. And number two, let's talk about the backlash in the motions. Number one, about it is necessity to actually like relax the immigrant policies. We ourselves have proved to you like the main problem that the Japanese government are facing now is the exchange problem. It's the problem of lack of the human labor force. And like you in the other side, say like the current situation, you protect the current situation and say that that is fine. But it is not fine. It's three main problems. Number one, the problem about like the immigrants themselves. In your program, the immigrants now are not working for a cheap salary. They're working under harsh conditions. And like less competitive company actually hire them. And like that is harmful for the immigrants and less incentive for them to come to Japan. But in our South how with that kind of plan, more companies will have the incentive to hire this kind of people. It's make the competitive hiring of such people more less like incentivize them more to come to Japan. It's meaning like the our plan is working for in the first place. But number two, use like the problem that we want to solve and like exclusively solve in this debate is the problem of the lacking of human labor force. And you bring out a, you bring out a number like. 3% of unemployment and you want to protect and like you want to protect that kind of unemployment however with the speaker let's compare the problem now it's only 3% of unemployment called like like versus thing with like the whole of like the systematically collapse possibility in the future because of the lacking of the pension system because of lacking of the human labor force in the future that is the problem which problem we should prioritize of course the problem about the labor force and something like that because even for Vietnam our countries now the unemployment is about over 10% 
and like in the scalp, okay, that is a real problem. But it is 3%. It's gonna be calculated by students, about like the doctor or, or the one who actually like working in the university, like studying in the university who actually didn't have a real job, or the one who worked in the military or something like that. So you need to prove to them why that kind of 3% should be a larger problem than a problem for, for, uh, like, on the government side to like, like uh, in order to the Japanese government to prioritize in the first place. But let's talk about the backlash. You mentioned about the backlash, like it's gonna be hinder the technologies and like it's gonna be like reduce like the unemployment. However, two respond from outside. Number one, we put for you that like in the same at the same time, immigrants contribute for the economic of Japan. Like like the prime minister already proved to you in the her data and in her speech. However, all the things that like we heard from your side is that like they gonna cost more than actually what they pay for. We need the real data here so that we can actually compense like com like compress between the both sides. And number two about like the robotic problem. Something that robotic cannot do, and like only human can do, for example, nursing, for example, taking a very complicated job. In that kind of thing, we still need the human labor force. So, for all the reasons, proud to stand in the affirmative side. Now, there's no questioning after this speech, so we'll move on to directly negative defense speech. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. So I want to clarify. At first, at one thing in the first, to begin with, the first, so they misunderstood about some, the rate of some, the three and the unemployment rate. It's not about 63 percent, but it's three percent. The 63 percent is the percentage of some, the people who can still work in the society, uh, as in the total, as we can see from from total of some. Japanese population, right? So therefore, so it is the pro. The real problem is that so that uh, we can so that by so even if so, it, there are automation, so that we so Japanese so by so that massive immigration, so we can so so Japanese so the, the space for the Japanese uh, Japanese employees will decrease so in the first place, so. By sort of taking a place, the, the taking a place by the, some massive immigrants, right? So it is a real problem, uh, which we want to just uh, present it from some negative side. So uh, okay, so I will respond. Okay, I will respond to the what uh, at my what the attack speaker has said. The the memory talk about even even is there the automatic. Uh, the mechanicalization, mechanic, mechanization, automat automation will uh, pro proceed in the Japan, in Japan, so that they, they can some, they, they can complete some lack of some shortage, uh, lack of some shortage by say, another industry like some agriculture or something like other industries. But however, uh, so as a government, so as a Japanese government. They should so it should some um, invest to the Japanese people at first, at first, right? So uh, there are so the, in the, the training, so the, even so in a, in a, some job training for the immigrants or some we it costs some millions of yen. Even it takes cost millions of yen, and also the uh, if so it took place by the massive immigrants, they uh, and. The, and and more in, in the auto uh, automation, so we can, so Japanese people, uh, so Japanese people they can cannot there cannot afford to the, apply for the job and acquire a job, and also that we can so um, if it, if not the prioritized the Japanese employments they are not will 
not willing to give it birth to the children, and also they lose confidence in applying for a job. So that is the lead to some decree, decline of the Japanese population, right? Therefore, their solution, the government solution, is the worst that makes the world, the Japanese population decrease, decreasing or the Japanese population make more, much more worse, much more worse. right? So therefore, we should not, we should strongly oppose this resolution. Thank you. Uh, we have two minutes preparation and then we move on to summary speeches. Uh, summary speeches will also start with the Japan. We'd like to welcome a formative summary speech. Is how many minutes? Three, three. Oh, about twenty thirty. <laughs> okay. So there's been a lot of mix-up with numbers in this debate, so I'll clarify a little bit. 3% of people in Japan are unemployed. 40% will no longer be able to work again because of the super aging population. And 100% of robots will kill you if they try to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> the only people in this debate who have created a solution to the super aging population is the affirmative, which is why it is so necessary to stop giving into the type of conservatism, you know, that kind of sound like Donald Trump, mm -hmm. that scares you away from foreigners. Right? We're not the, there's not the scary foreigner right, that of tales of the past that like, older people in Japan who are more conservative might have told you. That is not the case today. The individuals who we have talked about are nurses who are coming here who are currently stuck in the trainee programs, which is the reason why they are not able to get enough money. We fix that. The people who we are, we are bringing over are able to produce tax income, which they have not responded to. Even if you have robots, even if you have some people, more tax income, specifically in rural areas where people are abandoning for bigger cities, is necessary. They don't produce spending. Even if they bring in some people, they have conceded that spending is necessary to invigorate the economy. But lastly, they don't bring in human capital. Human capital, human difference, is what sparks innovation. And to be honest, it's part of the reason why the U.S. economy started to go down, why the Japanese economy has started to slow down since the 90s. But there's a lot of companies, which I would love to work for, and I'm sure you are in university, so you can work for, that are starting to understand this difference. Big companies like Apple, Microsoft, 
and Google, you would think only want like the best STEM workers, science, technology, engineering, math. But that is not true. They are starting to hire musicians, people who study public administration, people who study the environment, because they know that difference is what sparks new ideas. So even if there's a sufficient number that could not hurt the 3% of the economy, or a robot that might be able to do someone's job, I ask you, would you rather have people come in who can help spark difference, spark new ideas to invigorate the economy, or a robot that wants to steal your grandma's job? <laughs> I think that the answer is pretty simple. Now, we should really think about how all these arguments fit together. We are talking about the future, where they are just rehashing old conservative arguments about the fear of the foreign other. We've seen that in America, this is a bad idea. If you were here for any of the conversations earlier or any of the debates, you'll see that this type of conservative, destructive thinking is what literally is holding back America. Okay, we'll move on to the last speech of the debate. Negative summary speaker. Three minutes. As much as I love being compared to Donald Trump, I'm here today to tell you that that is not what Team Negative represents. Instead, what Team Negative represents is the idea of reasonable immigration, of reasonable acceptance for the others, and what the Japanese government, yeah guys, should actually prioritize in today's debate. And we believe that means making sure the immigrants are in a place that they can be here in a way that will allow them to better incorporate themselves into Japanese culture, but also keeping out for the true priority of Japanese government, which should be Japanese citizens. So let's talk about why our side of the house is essentially going to win in today's debate. What we have to first understand is that the, the affirmative side represents a plan. They represent a plan of incorporating 10 million more immigrants into the Japanese population. This number doesn't sound so big until we realize that right now we have 2.4 million immigrants total in Japan. Imagine expanding that significantly over such a short amount of time. We have constantly told you that this is too much too fast. We don't have to say no immigrants ever, but instead we're going to say that most of their evidence about how immigration is good relies on reasonable immigration, which happens in short amount of times with strict tests like what nurses have to go through to make sure this happens. So let's dissect this in order to really understand this idea. Let's first look at the two advantages that are presented from the affirmative team. The first of which is this idea of economic development to solve for the aging population and what societal stabilization looks like. We tell you that economic development of the aging population is important, but at the point where so many jobs go to immigrants instead of going to Japanese citizens, it actually hurts Japanese citizens, that they're not able to fill those jobs. Constantly in Cross-Ex, we were asked the question, well, why don't more Japanese people become nurses? If you are a hospital hiring, would you want to pay the overqualified Japanese citizen, or would you want to pay the Indonesian or Peruvian individual who will work at half price? This is the problem we're experiencing in the status quo. And because these individuals, it's their second language, it's very hard to immigrate, to only 20% of these nurses are actually able to pass the test in order to stay in Japan. Most fail the Japanese test, and that is actually why they're exported back. We don't want to relax these immigration standards. We want the best quality care for grandma. This is important. So what we present to you is this idea of alternatives. This is where our arguments on how automation increasing is good, how birth rates increasing are good. When we look at the data and see that most developed countries who have taken in an influx of Japanese, or excuse me, an influx of immigrants, their birth rates lower because they fear about the future of their jobs. We think this is bad and makes the problem even worse when it comes to the Japanese economy. But secondly, we also tell you that we want to be able to be on the edge of innovation and on the edge of Japanese growth economy, or excuse me, of the economy. What we want to do in today's debate is we want to make sure that the tax income and the human capital is first prioritized to Japanese citizens. This does not mean no immigration ever, but it means very small amounts to make sure that the money, the capital that truly matters most, goes to the charges of the Japanese government, which will always be Japanese citizens. We can only see a vote negation. Thank you. Thank you very much all the speakers. Uh, we run out of time, but uh, probably just a few minutes uh, for Dr. Kepper to give some feedback. Thank you.
you all again for coming out to the debate today. And as I only have a couple of minutes, I will speak for much less time than I usually would, which means less bad jokes. But, but I do want to point out that there has been some research that suggests that nine out of 10 people experience some form of public speaking anxiety. That 10th person is a liar. Everyone gets nervous when they do public speaking. And so I think our debaters today did something excellent when they came up and were willing to speak in front of everyone today. I just wanted to point out three things that I thought were really good in today's debate. So if you're learning how to debate, I want to highlight three things our debaters did that were excellent that you can model in your own debate practice. The first is the balance of attacking and defense. That to win a debate, you can't only go on with the attack or only do defense. You have to both prove that what the other side wants to solve isn't that bad, and that they have the potential to make it worse. And we saw that in this debate. We saw the negative said that this debate isn't about immigrants at all. It's about whether or not we should significantly relax immigration restrictions. So that the problem identified by the affirmative wasn't really that bad in the first place. And then some reasons why they might make it worse. Similarly, the affirmative wanted us to think about how the shifts in labor meant that if it's automation or it's immigrants, both hurt Japanese citizens. So it's a question of which one can also help Japanese citizens. And so using tax dollars actually makes things better. So you saw that both sides had a balance of attack and defense, which you need to be an effective debater. The second thing is they both had very effective cross-examination. A lot of times when people ask questions and they're new in debate, they focus too much on just getting the information. But what they don't realize is that when we ask questions, we have the opportunity to engage in dialogue with the other side that we're talking with, which means we can get them to think about the topic in terms of our argument and our strategy. And we do this by making a statement and then asking a question. So what you saw a lot in this debate was one team saying, you gave us this number about employment, or you gave us this number about the workforce. If that number is true, then what about something else? If that number is so high for unemployment, then why hasn't the economy collapsed? If these citizens can engage or these immigrants can engage in this job, why aren't they doing it already? And so the question isn't just, what did you say in your speech? But the question was, if an argument you made is true, then why isn't this other argument also true? And that strategy is a really good way of developing your own argument. The third thing that I think they did very well in this debate that new debaters can learn from is to recognize your strengths. As much as you want to, even when you're a champion debater, you never win every argument. It is, sometimes debaters in America have a phrase where they say, we're winning arguments everywhere on the flow. And that is not true. You are never winning every argument in a debate. So part of what a good debater does is recognizes the places where both sides overlap, where they don't need to have the debate, and then focusing on their own strengths. And the phrase that you can use for that is the phrase, even if. Even if wins debates. So when one side says, even if it's true that these things might happen with the economy, robots are important for immigration. Or if they say, even if it's true it might take jobs, what we need to do is establish a policy that helps Japanese citizens. What they're saying is, even if I lose part of the debate, I still win the debate overall. And that's a really important argumentative strategy because it lets you establish common ground with the other side. And then you can focus the debate down to what really matters, which in this debate was a debate over what is the responsibility of the government and how can they best protect Japanese citizens versus how should Japan respond to challenges of aging and automation. So if you want to be a good debater, I would do what you saw here today and make sure that you're balancing attack and defense, you're asking effective cross-examination questions, and you're making sure to recognize your strengths. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Uh, this closes the third part of the Japan-US exchange debate. And uh, 
we have um, about 20 minutes break and move on to the parliamentary debate agent side. Uh, that will start um, 6.30, 6.30 this room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.